You're tuned in to Dr. Tim's pain-free podcast, educating the world about living a pain-free life. Find all our episodes on iTunes, Stitcher, Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Dr. Tim's pain-free podcast. This is our fifth episode. That's right. Fifth one. one. So what are we going to be talking about today? Today we're talking about knees. Knee knee pain. Knee yeah. pain. Oh, that's incredibly common. We treat a lot of knee pain here at Trinity Integrated Medical. It's since we integrated our clinic and uh, switched from being only chiropractic to a medical integrated clinic, we uh, probably see knee pain uh, maybe the second most common thing that we see in the office after low back pain. Yeah. Yeah. Probably so why, why is knee pain so common? Well, you know, knee pain's uh, common because knees are the weight-bearing joint of our lower extremity, and so all of our body weight is on our knees every time we stand. Uh, and so there's a lot of different issues that can come as a result of that, all the wear and tear, uh, not to mention all the sports types injuries that are connected with knee pain. Right. Uh, you know, whether it be an acute injury, like a sprain strain uh, of the ligaments or pull of the muscles, uh, it can also be something that you know, you kind of favor after an old injury for so long that you start to kind of shift and wear and tear. And then when you get into your 50s, 60s, 70s in life, uh, you start to see that that one side of the joint may be worn out more than the other one. And it becomes a chronic source of pain that just triggers every time you take a step. And, so, you fa- and you're favoring it means you change the way you walk. That's right. Just changing your gait could that, affect your knee. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Lots of different kinds of tissue in the knee. Tell yeah. About anatomy. So the anatomy knee, we have a picture here for those watching via video. But, uh, you know, the knee basically has... Uh, four major ligaments that are the stability. Ligaments hold bones to bones. So you've got the, uh, the inside part uh, and the outside part, which are the collateral ligaments. And right on the inside, behind the kneecap, right inside the middle of your knee joint space, you have two ligaments that cross one another. And that cross uh, in Latin is cruciate. So you have the anterior and the posterior cruciate ligaments, or people say they're ACL. You've probably heard right. of that. If you see a, a, tr- a devastating injury on a football field, they say, oh, they tore their ACL. Right. So that's the anterior cruciate ligament. It's the one of those crossed ligaments in the middle of the knee that prevent the lower leg from sliding forward. So oh, they okay. hold it in place so that you don't hyperextend when you walk. So if you get hit from the front real hard and you bend your knee backwards in the hyperextended motion, you sprain your ACL or you could tear it completely. Or any shots from the side in a football field, for example, again, you're going to sprain or tear the inside portion. The other structures in the knee besides the ligaments are the cartilage. There's cartilage on the ends of the bones as well as a big piece of cartilage from the side here that you can see if you're looking. It's called the meniscus. Hopefully you can see this on the video. Uh, But the meniscus is a cartilage uh, element that basically serves as an other layer of protection between the cartilage on the ends of the bones, which serve as protection for the bones themselves. So when people say, oh, my knees wore out, it's bone on bone, then they've worn out the meniscus and they're already starting to wear through the cartilage that's the cap over the bone. So the bones are truly bone on bone. When you get in that case, it's pretty much pain on every step. Excruciating. No relief. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. And so what, what, what are the typical ways that we treat or the typical cycle of how, how things get treated? Right you know, now? I talk about this often because in, in Western medicine, allopathic medicine, the general rule of thumb is that the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get a pill. For your pain and so you know we've talked about it on other podcasts that that pain pills are not going to fix the problem but that's what they do they give you a pain pill because they want you at least to get relief from the the symptom of pain Uh, but you know after you you go through that part of the cycle you you get to a point to where you say these pain pills are not working you may have jumped up to something even stronger and now it's starting to not work eventually you find yourself in the doctor's office getting an x-ray and the x-ray is kind of the baseline to see what the structure of the joint looks like. You can't really see the ligaments or the tendons or uh, the, even the cartilage in between the bones on an x-ray, but you can see the spacing. You can see the rotation and structural misalignments of the knee. You can see if the kneecap is pulled way off to one side. Therefore, you may be more prone to a dislocation of the knee. Um, you can see arthritis. You can see arthritis on the x-ray for sure. Uh, and then after you get that x-ray taken, if you are diagnosed with some one of those conditions like an arthritis or even maybe a, 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 a suspected partial tear without an MRI, they're going to probably recommend some shots. And the general rule uh, in medicine is that you go with cortisone, which is a steroid. And I'll tell you why that's not so good in a minute. But you get a cortisone shot, and that decreases your inflammation. And then if it comes back, 
then they say, well, we kind of got to go from the cortisone to the extreme of surgery. And so at that point, they would do an MRI. They would see exactly what was torn, what was damaged. If it's all just worn out, uh, they would go in and talk to you about the different types of surgery. A scope surgery may be one that's not quite as invasive because they're just going to poke little tiny holes in you and they're going to clean the meniscus. If it's uh, you know, been torn, or if it's uh, starting to break apart, all those little slivers of that, they call that joint mice because it's kind of stuck in the wrong place in your knee uh, when they're not supposed to be there. And they go in and clean that out, or they can talk about partial knee replacement or total knee replacement. A partial knee replacement is just that. They're taking one part compartment of your knee and they're cutting the bone back and they're putting in some titanium so now the articulation between those two bones is no longer that bone cartilage layer meniscus but it's more of titanium, a plastic filler, and titanium on each end of those bones. And if a total knee replacement is done, then it's the whole bone is cut all the way across Two new parts are put on there, top and bottom of that knee joint, and then they go from there. That's that's a knee replacement. And the scope is through a couple of holes, but the other one you that's right. your major surgery. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. it's a, it's an open knee surgery where they cut you open, they pull the patella off to the side. Some people get a new patella. Uh, that's kind of a I'm not sure if that's a plastic part or what, but I've seen pictures of it. I've never had one myself, and I don't have too many patients that have had it because we're in the business of trying to prevent that type of work. So there are some al there are some alternatives that's to that news. typical pain cycle. That's right. Yeah, that's a different way that we treat it here. That's right. Okay. Well, let's learn more about that when we come back. Okay. All right. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Tim's Pain Free Podcast. Thanks for joining us on Dr. Tim's Pain-Free Podcast. Help us spread the word by sharing this show with your friends and family and posting to your social media. Now back to the show. Welcome back. We were just talking about knees, knee pain. So recap what we were just talking about. Well, you know, we talked about the pain cycle or the, the treatment cycle, and typically it starts with medications, then gets to steroids at some point, and then they talk about surgery. And so I kind of want to just touch briefly on those uh, in particular, so I can kind of lead us into the alternatives to that. Uh, the side effects of these things are not so good. So we know that the oral pain meds don't fix the problem. Right. Okay, there, there's nothing regenerative, there's nothing uh, even healing about an oral pain med. It's simply taking maybe six, 800 milligrams of an anti-inflammatory, or it's taking uh, you know, a, a, an actual pain pill. And, and the mechanism, the way the pain pill works is that it just doesn't let the signal from the knee pain get to your brain. It, it stops it, and so you say, I, I have no pain, and you continue on to possibly do damage. Yeah, there's still damage. So, there's still damage. It's not fixing that. So the, the, they're also addicting, and, and they just don't heal the problem. We know that oral pain meds and anti-inflammatories taken orally don't heal the problem. Um, they may help temporarily, but it's going to come back. And they may that's cause what, other problems with your liver. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, when you're taking 600, 800 milligrams orally, that's going into your stomach, and then it's got to get into your the top part of your small intestine before it's then put into your bloodstream, and you hope... That that some of that knee. medication gets yeah. down to your knee through the yeah. circulation. Um, so the alternative to that is we actually would go with a Toradol shot. And a Toradol is, uh, it's like Ketorolac, the, the brand name is Toradol. We use that primarily because you can, only, you can get away with about 30 milligrams in one shot. Oh, that's what Put it directly into the knee. And Where therefore the you knee? decrease inflammation. Good news is, is that it doesn't have those negative side effects of the steroid shot. And so the steroid shot, if you Google the side effects of steroid shots, you'll see that you know, the, the first couple are good things. It decreases inflammation. It helps with pain. However, uh, after the very short list of good things it does, it's a very long list of the bad things. And the potential side effects include uh, decreasing uh, your, uh, the spacing between your joints. It actually leads to further the problem that is what you're treating yeah. with a steroid shot. Um, it will uh, degrade the bone density. It'll uh, make a spike in your blood sugar. It'll increase your blood pressure. There's lots of negative side effects of steroids. So uh, and that's why they limit them, right? Absolutely. You can only get, you can only get three okay. in, in a 12 year, a 12 month period. And because because they're dangerous. Okay. Yeah. And okay. so if you know that the side effects of this particular medication, regardless of what that medicine is, include all of the things that you are treating 
then it doesn't really make sense. Make sense I mean, you could explain that to a six-year-old that, you know, if, if you're treating a bad stomach issue, we're going to give you this pill. One of the potential side effects is that you get an upset stomach. Yeah. They'd say, I don't want that pill. That's <laughs> what we do with steroids, though. Right. And, then, and they pass them out like they're, you know, like they're just nothing. Yeah. You know? So, so I, I get upset when I start hearing about people having multiple steroid shots because I see that it actually has made the problem worse. It's degenerated the bone, uh, the, the actual structure of the joint. It's sometimes it melts away soft tissue. It just kind of eats it up. It's not a good, good product. So uh, we, we stay away from the steroid shots. We'd much rather do the Tordol, which is not a steroid. It's a non steroidal anti-inflammatory. Um, you know, then uh, I was going to talk about surgeries too, and, and I, I briefly touched on it before, but people don't, don't realize that surgery is never used to treat pain. Uh, I talked to a, a medical director of a clinic just this week on Monday, and that was one of the statements that he said that I, I thought he was going to be pro-surgery. But he said, you know, Dr. Tim, surgery doesn't treat pain. So people have all this pain, they go get a surgery, and when they come out of surgery, they still have pain. So what do they do? They reach for medication. Mm -hmm. Now they right. have the potential of being addicted, and the surgery didn't fix the pain. It might have helped the problem and the and cause of the pain if they had something torn or snapped or broken. Uh, but, uh, you know, the surgeries uh, in general are, are, have a long recovery time that people don't think about. You, after a knee replacement, you can't drive for months. And so it's a major change to your lifestyle. So if there's something that could avoid those extremes, that's what we're all about. Yeah, the alternative. alternative. That's right. Okay. So let's get to that. What are some of the best... I know we got to start by figuring out exactly what the problem is, right? That's right. You got to get the proper diagnosis. Yep. So how do you go about doing that? So the way we diagnose a, a knee problem is take a very good history because you got to know if there's been some trauma. Even if the trauma was a while back and the person uh, was playing soccer and they were running along and they stepped in a hole where a sprinkler head might have been or something mm -hmm. they didn't see and they kind of hyperextended their knee. And then they go on playing soccer and then months go by and they say, yeah, that knee's never been the same. Uh, so we got to know that that kind of started it because that'll lead us to an injured ligament, mm -hmm. like a sprained strain, uh, maybe a tear in the meniscus type of injury. Uh, but if it's one of those things where after doing a thorough investigation and figuring out that there's nothing that's been recent, if there was any trauma, it was back in my 20s and now say I'm in my 50s. Yeah. So we start leaning towards it's a degenerative condition. So there's complications in that case uh, that you won't have in the acute sprain of a ligament, which is going to heal over time and that sort of thing. So uh, it complicates the case when there's degeneration involved, but the diagnosis uh, that comes from the x-ray is good to a point. But at some point you say, you know what, we're not being able to see exactly what's going on here because the x-ray, keep in mind, only shows the bones and it shows the spaces between the bones, but it doesn't show what's in that space. You can just compare those spaces. I've got a, a picture of an x-ray right here for those that are watching, uh, and it shows the spaces on this left knee of this person and the spaces on the right knee of this person. You can see the space here should be even to the space here, and this one's very closed. Yeah. So this is a degenerative condition that has not happened. They didn't sprain their knee last week and it looked like this. They sprained their knee maybe years ago, or they've just been walking differently for a long period of time, and it started to wear and tear down uh, on the right side of the knee. Oftentimes, compare it to like the tires on a car, okay. right? I've said this before, maybe even on this podcast, but the tires are like uh, the joints and the alignments like the spine. And so if everything's out of alignment in your car, then you wear out the tires improperly. Mm -hmm. And if you just go changing the tires all the time, you're not gonna ever fix the problem. You wear them out the same way. You wear them out the exact same way every time. So you get the tires replaced on the car, now they got brand new tread, but you also put it on a rack and realign the, the changes in the front tire and how it steers and how they bend in and out and all those different things. Uh, and that helps to prolong the life of the tire. So if our hips are way out of alignment, we start talking about structure here in a minute, that's a big one because the joints surrounding the knee, both below it and above it, you might have fixations in an ankle that cause you to not walk properly, and it throws your hips out of alignment, and the ankle and the hips may not scream at you, but the knee will start yeah. to scream at yeah, you. Yeah. you know? In fact, a real common uh, thing is that people have foot surgery, and then they get put in a walking boot. Yeah. And then they show up in our office saying, my back hurts. And we say, well, obviously you're in this big old platform on one yeah. foot and you're walking like this and your gait's all off and that's gonna go right back to the spine. And then guess what? We start looking at the knees and the, 
in a short period of time, they start to yeah, wear down properly. Only in a few weeks, even. Yep. they'll start hurting. Okay. That's right. All right, so we deal with the structure. That's right. And we deal with that right there. That's right. That's right. So if if this knee is kind of bending in, like you can see, that's called a, a, a valgus deformity, valgus with a G. And that means that the lateral component is going to be thinner than the other components. So we look at how to help change that structure. Um, and so, uh, you know, kind of to backtrack before all that, uh, you know, we look at it like there's these major things that we've got to, to look at in order to diagnose, to treat. The first one being pain and inflammation, the second one being the structure, and the third one being, you know, like stabilizing that joint. Uh, and so when we get past the, the Toradol anti-inflammatory shots, and uh, possibly at that point, if there is some wear and tear that shows on the x-ray or even the MRI, then you can go to a visco supplement type of injection. And that's a big, you know, fancy word, visco supplement, but that's the things like uh, the hyaluronic acid, the Genvisc, uh, Synvisc, Orthovisc, Suparts. Those are brand names of a gel-like substance that actually is bioidentical to the hyaluronic acid that's in your knee already. And so as the bones get closer and closer and closer like this x-ray, then sometimes the treatment is to put that gel back in there. It's like adding oil to a squeaky hinge on a door and now it, it swings pretty good. It didn't fix the door, but it works for a, for a little okay. while. So, so it lubricates. The, the gel is a lubrication type of injection. It's a thick a gel-like substance that goes in there and it does decrease inflammation and it lubricates those joints. It, it, exactly after the injection, within minutes, you can walk around and feel a difference because there's more space in your knee. The only trouble with that is, however that space was thinning before is gonna eventually thin again. So it's really just kicking the can further down the road. It's, there's still a can in the road, Yep. You're still going to be faced with this problem in the future, but it's a safer alternative than just loading up on steroid shots for sure. So that's kind of the way we address the pain and the inflammation. Okay. And so then to kind of lead us into the, how do we look at the structure? Well, we got to see if there's a, a bend in the knee that's the wrong direction. We got to see if the hips are unlevel. Uh, sometimes a knee condition is because the muscles in the upper part of the thigh are not pulling evenly on the patella the kneecap here. You can see it in this picture, as a matter of fact. Uh, on this side, this kneecap is being pulled that way off to the side. Well, when the kneecap is pulled that way, it's like a tug of war between this muscle and this muscle. The middle part of the knee and the outer part of the knee are both connected to the patella, the kneecap. And so if one is overactive, then it'll pull that off to the side, and then people say, my knees start grinding on me. Why is that happening? Well, it's because the kneecap is not sitting in the groove yeah that it's supposed to sit in, in the femur, gotcha. right? And so if it's off to the side, then it's gonna start making that crepitation sound of that grinding sound when you bend. When you, you know, people say, oh, I can't even squat without it just sounding like fireworks going yeah. off of my knees. It's just pow, pow, pow. And then I start to squeak, and, and when I climb stairs, you can hear me from a, you know, a hallway away. And that's because the patella may not be in its right groove. That's called yeah. chondromalacia patella, grinding of the back of the kneecap. And there's smooth cartilage here and there's smooth cartilage on the back, but when they get away from each other, they're not on smooth. They're not they're on, on smooth cartilage yeah. anymore, exactly. That makes noise, that makes sense. That is, yeah. Okay, so we've dealt with the pain inflammation. We talked about the structure. Yep. And then support. So supporting that uh, as a way of stabilizing, oftentimes, um, you know, the, the patient may come in here with one of those store-brought knee braces on. Mm -hmm. And slip on. Yeah, and, and I'm not opposed to that whatsoever because um, there's been some research done uh, by the Journal of, uh, let me see, I'll find my notes here. It's by the Journal of Joint, or excuse me, the Journal of Bone and Surgery. I'll get it right. It's the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery. Here you right. go. So this is published in uh, PubMed.gov, which is one of the, the best places to go and look up research if you're trying to figure out something that's actually legit. It's not a sales page. It doesn't endorse any kind of product. It's by our government. It's PubMed.gov. And uh, they listed this study as they took 119 patients selected at random that had been going through knee treatments for pain. Um, on 40 of them, 
They were the control group. They did nothing. They just let them do the normal treatment, no bracing whatsoever. On 38 of them, they wore one of those compression type sleeves that you can buy at any local pharmacy okay. or drugstore. You just pull it up like a sock and it stops on the knee. Uh, then 41, the last 41 of them to make 119, they wore what's called an offloading or unloading knee brace. And that's where a brace specifically targets one of these types of conditions where it's thinner on one compartment versus the other. And so it actually bends the knee in the lateral movement direction as opposed to the way it normally bends. So it's like realigning the joint so that it can bend more properly. Yeah, all knee braces move this way, but the offloader moves this it way does. as well. And then you set it into a certain position and then it can bend this way. And so people so notice a lot of pain relief just by putting one of those on. Gotcha. And yeah, it opens that space up. That's right. right. That's what we're trying to do. So the study, uh, also the average age of the person in this 119 people study was 59 years of age. So these aren't young athletic people. And at the end of six months, keep in mind, they were getting the normal regular treatment, which probably consisted of the things we talked about, yeah. the pills, the steroid shots, uh, maybe some rehab. Uh, and stretching, physical therapy, that sort of thing. But a certain group of them, 40 wore nothing, 38 wore a compression knee brace, and 41 wore an offloading knee brace. And here's what the results showed. At the end of six months, they had all these people brought back into the group, and they did a six-minute walking test and a 30-second stair climbing test. And at the end of that six minutes and that 30 seconds, they said, what is your pain like? And they had them fill out all these questionnaires. And they determined that the ones that were, the, crew, the two groups that were wearing the braces had a significant reduction in pain after walking for six minutes compared to those that did not have a brace. So they all got the same treatment except for the bracing. And then when they compared the two of the two types of braces, the ones that had the obviously more expensive and more uh, industrial size brace that actually bends you in the other direction, the offloading type knee brace, they even had better results than those with the pull-up neoprene. So it goes to show you that stabilizing the joint with that structure, uh, and especially if you know specifically the diagnosis of what you're trying to, which side you're trying to open up, an offload and knee brace can create a decreased pain in a person in, in a matter of minutes. Okay. Yeah, and our clinical experience has shown that as well here in the clinic, um, not just with the research here, but our own, what we see on a regular basis. We've had people that were runners that developed a knee pain. And then all of a sudden, we get them in the right brace. They go back to running the same day and come in the, within a few days and say, I was sore, but it wasn't the knee pain that prevents me from running. It was right. just getting used to the brace sure. because it actually changed their structure instantly. Sure. It really stabilized the joint in a new way. So supporting it, neoprene brace, offloader brace. That's right. Taping. Sure. K-taping. K-tape, yep. We do okay. K-taping and rock tape here. It's uh, K-tape is a is more of a uh, trying to mimic a muscle around a joint. So the old-fashioned athletic tape that you see around um, an injured player at a football game and they sprain their ankle. Well, if they sprain it, it's not stable. So they want to go in and just tighten it as tight as they can so that you can walk. It's not going to do anything to long-term heal you, but it's going to let you perform in that game without a ligament, yeah, get maybe. Back, get back in there. Get back in there, yeah. The no blood, no foul, whatever. Uh, but no, the, uh, the, uh, the K-tape, the kinetic, uh, uh, the kinesio tape, we use a company called Rock Tape for ours here, but uh, it's a good durable tape. It's more of uh, mimicking the muscles that go around. So you see these people on TV, maybe they're CrossFitters. Uh, that's real popular. Uh, or maybe they're beach volleyball players. And now you're seeing NBA players, mm -hmm. uh, NFL players. They all have this cape that kind of looks like, uh, the tape looks like design. spider tape. It's yeah. got a design. That's not a design to look good like a tattoo, like I used to think okay. before I knew what K-tape was years ago. Uh, that that K-tape is designed to go the way a muscle shapes and goes around a joint. So in the knee, you'll see it going across the patella and coming back down. You'll see an anchor across, and then you'll see some going up the sides that mimic the muscles. They're trying to help your body snap back into a normal position with that tape, which again, offers stability in the long term, but it decreases pain sometimes instantly. Okay. Yeah. So we got pain and inflammation, we've dealt with the structure, We've looked at the support that mm -hmm. we need. Are there other alternatives? Well, you know, the, the last thing I would say is probably uh, one of those that we save for the you're almost too far gone kind of people. Uh, it's not for everyone. It's becoming more and more common for more and more conditions. Uh, but the FDA has cleared it for musculoskeletal purposes, and that's, you know, injecting into the joints. And that is the use of regenerative medicine. 
So the regenerative medicine would be like the stem cell commercials that you hear on the radio all the time. Okay. Uh, if you listen to the radio in, the, in, in our area, in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, uh, there's, there's clinics popping up everywhere that do this regenerative medicine. And what they found is that these live mesenchymal stem cells are derived from the, a small section of an umbilical cord of a newborn baby. So instead of discarding that cord, they actually send it to a tissue bank, and that tissue bank harvests out all of the mesenchymal stem cells, which are live and viable and good to go, and they freeze them, and then they ship them to doctor's offices when they buy them, and then they can put them then into joints of patients. And uh, the, the research that's done is second to none. The uh, results are second to none as well. Uh, so that, that's, that's an alternative when you are kind of too far gone and they're saying you don't have any other choice but to do a total knee replacement surgery. I would say just wait on that. Just, just give, it a, give it a few months with a stem cell going to work in there and you'll see the body has its own natural ability to heal in the right environment with all the growth factors and with all those stem cells that are in there. And that's part of what is an injectable. That's an injectable. That's right. Okay. So, so yeah, the, you know, if you think about it, I won't go into too much detail about regenerative medicine because we're going to do a whole other podcast on that. So if you're interested in that, you know, comment below uh, in the comment section here on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever you're watching this. But uh, you got to know that, uh, you know, if you think back really to the beginning, the very beginning, which is a sperm cell and an egg cell, they come together. Well, then the only thing present in that environment is a lot of growth factor in those stem cells in the umbilical cord. So they're loading the stem cells and those growth factors are causing them to proliferate and differentiate into other things. The stem cell is like the master cell. It becomes everything. It's like the artist with a blank canvas, right? What can that painting become? Anything that artist wants it to become. So in our body, the DNA and those levels of cytokines and kinases, they tell that stem cell exactly what to become. And then in a matter of days, that sperm and egg that got together and fertilized that egg, well, now you've got a, a brain and spinal cord starting to form. Well, there wasn't brain and spinal cord tissue there beforehand. There were stem cells that morphed into brain and spinal cord. Well, then after that's developed, the stem cells become something different, and they continue to lay down all the tissue that makes up over 100 trillion cells later a, a newborn baby, right? So there's, there, it's like there's a gold mine in this uh, stem cell production factory here in the umbilical cord, and it, and it sits within the Wharton's jelly. That's spelled W H. A-R-T-O-N-S. Wharton's jelly is where we get all of our live mesenchymal stem cells from. That's the best source of them. And so the idea is that in, in utero, a growth factor in a stem cell, the growth factor for brain, say, that's been identified probably. Sure. They go together to form a baby's brain. That's right. A, the same stem cell and a growth factor for cartilage go together and make a baby's knee. That's it. Okay. That's exactly where it is. So, so inject it into a knee. Yep can help to regenerate a what, was, what was lost. Right, it's not gonna generate a brain and a knee because the, the, the factors that are in the knee are saying we need cartilage. That's why you don't uh, want to uh, decrease 100% of the inflammation over a long period of time with a ton of steroids and then try and think a stem cell is gonna work because it kind of needs that signal to say, this is what we want the stem kind of the cell to, signal to produce. It's telling it what to become. That's right. Because we could put that same stem cell in a shoulder. I know we're not talking about shoulders today, but in a shoulder, that same stem cell would regenerate maybe a, a ligament or the labrum or the rotator cuff muscle tendon attachments. And that same stem cell sample could go in another person's knee and regenerate cartilage. It's the body doing the regenerating, but it's those stem cells that are saying, let's go, let's do it, let's lay down the lattice work of new tissue and build on ourself and remove the factors that are causing the damage in the first place. Um, and then, you know, we've got, we've got tons of patients that have had really, really good success with it. Yeah, it sounds like it's the greatest... What I can't think of the word here, but yeah. in our lifetime, right? Medical yeah, oh, breakthrough. Sure. Medical it is, breakthrough. I believe it is the greatest medical breakthrough in our lifetime for sure. Um, because now there's being research done. Again, I'll get into more of it whenever we have the time on a separate podcast about regenerative medicine. But they're treating multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's and all kinds of systemic things and autoimmune things and just letting the stem cells get in the body and go to work. 
And uh, it's way different than the stem cells that we have in our body now because ours are, let's face it, they're old and out of shape. <laughs> you know, they're ours. Yeah. But when you get the day old stem cell, man, it's like it's like rocket fuel. Most efficient. Most the very most efficient, yeah, and all the studies show that. Okay. Well, this has been great, very informative today, all about knees. You got any final thoughts? Well, you know, I just like to say that uh, we talked about the that kind of that treatment cycle that people get stuck in, and I hear this so many times. You know, I, I say, well, you probably had pills, and then you probably got steroid shots, and then you probably got an MRI, and then you probably are being told you need surgery, and they say, that's exactly how they think I'm a genius. That, it's no genius. That's just the way it works with that type of treatment for, for that condition in the knee. And so there is an alternative to that. And we here at Trend Integrated and Dr. Tim's Pain-Free Podcast, we uh, want to let you know about that alternative and tell you that uh, there's something that works on a lot of people. We have a lot of happy, satisfied customers that came in here with knee pains and didn't know what they were going to do. We've got several that were on the books to get replaced, a replacement surgery. A full-on sixty, seventy thousand dollar surgery with mm-hmm. weeks and months of downtime, and we put a stem cell in them, and they're walking around today going, "Hey, I wish I'd have done this before. Can I do other joints because I feel so good?" So it's it's pretty amazing when it comes to that stem cell. But we've done people with the Visco supplement treatment with lots of success. They can the insurance allows you to get that Visco every six months. Okay. And so you can kind of keep pushing the can down the road until you make a better decision or more research comes out that supports what we do and you hear about it better. Um, but, uh, you know, that and, and I didn't touch too much on this, but, uh, you know, the alignment is a huge issue. And so that's an alternative. If you don't remove the, the source of the problem being a bad hip or a bad low back that's causing the balance to be off, then the knee's going to continue to wear and tear and you're going to have knee pain, knee pain, knee pain. So uh, we like to address that and that's one of the alternatives uh, that, that we talk about here. But we're all about the alternatives and how to help you without drugs, unnecessary drugs, and unnecessary surgery uh, because that's no way to live. Yep. So if you're experiencing knee pain, you want to find out if we can help you, get in touch with us here at Trinity Integrated Medical. You can comment on below the videos here, or you can like us, you can share us. That's right. Yeah, spread, spread the word, spread help the word. tell others. Yep, we want to help you live a pain-free life without unnecessary medication, without unnecessary surgeries. That's what we're all about here on Dr. Tim's Pain-Free Podcast. We'll see you next week. Dr. Tim's Pain-Free Podcast is produced with you in mind. We are on a mission to better educate the world about living a pain-free life without drugs or surgery. Help us by spreading the word and sharing this podcast. Thanks for listening.